If you guys are anything like me, you've been staring at the attribute screen trying to figure out what your archetype is going to be for 2K19. I need to take a breather. It's definitely not healthy to be thinking this much. Through that process, I found some builds that are so truly abysmal that you should be ashamed if you created one. And some of these builds were popular in NBA 2K18, so you might think if you didn't do any analysis that it's going to be the same for 2K19. Mm-mm. All right, so let's get into it. The first build, and this should come as no surprise if you've been paying attention, is the pure stretch bigs. Oh my God, they went from hippity hopping, shooting over top everybody, to just, I was gonna say one of the worst builds, but I'm not even gonna play it safe. The worst build in the game. Before we get to shooting and talking about why pure stretches are so bad, we have to give a little bit of context. And for context, I hit up my guys at NBA 2K Lab. I was like, yo, we got to know about these wingspans this year, because it makes a massive difference, especially when it comes to shooting, but also when it comes to playmaking. They put out this tweet saying this, looks like wingspans affect different archetypes differently. For sharps, I've seen 14 attribute spread between max and min for three ball, but only a four point spread for blocking slash contest. For a pure lock, I saw a six point spread for three ball, but a 10 point spread for blocking slash contest. So while in the past, wingspans were just a plus or minus three, make a decision, this year, it makes a massive difference. So if you're a shooter or you're trying to get to tier three dribbling and you're a playmaker and you need ball handling, it might make sense to go average or minimize your wingspan, but if you're just about any other build, a slasher, a lockdown, a glass cleaner, chances are it makes sense to either go average or if you're a glass or a lockdown, max out your wingspan. All right, so we know that so far. This is where it gets funny. If you are a seven foot three, pure stretch big, and you max out your wingspan, the three point rating you're starting off with, say it with me now, drum roll please. 71. A pure stretch big with a 71. Now you might be thinking, Agent, I guess I'm just gonna have to minimize my wingspan, right? That, I'm, just, I'm still gonna use a pure sharp, Agent. You're wrong. Excuse me? Excuse me. If you pull up to my court with a stretch big with little ass T-Rex arms, my glass cleaner is gonna wipe the floor with your fucking face. You're the big man on the team. You guys are gonna have zero rebounds. God forbid a post scorer or a glass cleaner is on the other team. It is going to be the mismatch of the century. So either you go with the pure stretch with actual arms that can't shoot, or you go with the pure stretch that can still kind of shoot, even though it's still not a good build, but then you're getting dominated by literally any other center they put on the other team. It is not a good look. It is not a good look. Pierce, wow. I've never seen a build fall off this much year over year. So uh, don't make one of those builds. <laughs> I wish I was done making fun of this build, but I'm not. Let's hop on 2K Lab for a second. Let me input the badges real quick. Oh man, I'm having too much fun with this. The biggest L of 2K19 so far goes to the stretch bigs because, I mean, you got pick and popper. You want, you want a pick and popper badge, right? You really wanted that? You have a silver limitless range badge with pure stretch <laughs> So not only is your shooting attribute bad, but you have the same limitless range badge as like a playmaking sharpshooter. But you're pure. Not only are you primary sharp, you are pure. Oh, that is funny. That is really funny. All right, so this tops the list very easily because of all those facts. Next worst build, and this one is a huge drop off because it was about the most popular and overpowered point guard build last year, is a pure point forward. So Zach finally put out all the builds that can reach 86 and 90 ball control. For those that don't know the difference, 86 ball control is reaching tier three dribbling, you could speed boost and cheese. 90 ball control gives you like those stylish animations. So you get those extra animations on top of being able to speed boost. And so preferably if you're a point guard primary, you would like to try and get into 90 ball control range. And he was showing the builds that can do it. Now, if you look closely, 6'10 pure point forwards that were also popular last year that could speed boost aren't on the list. Playmaking primary, playmaking secondary, the highest you can be is 6'8 and also be able to speed boost. Keep in mind, this is with a default wingspan, so you might be able to get away with lowering your wingspan to maybe be 6'9". But then at that point, you're a 6'10", pure point forward with little T-Rex arms. One of the best things about the point forward was his ability to attack the rim last year. You also have to remember the taller you make your player, the worse his shooting is. And you also have to remember that even though he's saying the tallest is 6'8", to be able to speed boost, 
you have to grind to get there. If I'm not mistaken, the tallest you can be to initially, once you upgrade your player to 85 speed boost, is six foot six, pure playmaker with minimum wingspan. If you make yourself any taller than that or a wingspan any larger than that, you have to grind. And you don't know when you're gonna get the attributes. You might get it at 95 or 89 or 99 for all you know. So the, the safest bet and what a lot of people are doing is some people are going 6-7 and then grinding a little to get there. But a lot of people are just going with a 6-4 playmaking primary sharpshooter secondary or a 6-3 shot creator primary playmaker secondary. Yeah. The build fell off and I'd be surprised to see many people using it this year just because it doesn't reach that tier 3 dribbling. The next build and this one makes me sad because it was my favorite build in 2k18 is a slashing primary, sharp shooting secondary. It was a do it all build last year. You were taking it to the rim with overpower blow buys, doing contact dunks on everybody with glitched animations, silver limitless range with like a 74 open shot three. And with all of that combined, not only were you shooting great, you were moving with decent mobility and you were attacking the rim like a menace. This year, a six foot eight slashing primary, sharp shooting secondary only has, say it with me, an 81 driving dunk. Which means you cannot get the fancy contact dunks with the primary slasher build. That same build has a 66 open shot three. Now keep in mind, these are values to start. You can grind and get those numbers up four or five, but again, you don't know when you're gonna get those attributes. So unless you plan on grinding to 99, it's not safe to assume that you're gonna get all of those upgrades. So Zach also put out the tweet outlining which archetypes are gonna get specific dunk packages. And if you look at all of these, driving and finishing primary, three point shooting secondary, the tallest you can be is six foot four. So basically a point guard. That is not a point guard build anybody wants to play with. But then if you make him tall, his three pointer is so bad, it's not even, you can't even rely on the guy to hit his shots consistently. He does have the silver shooting badges still. So when I went to the 2K event a few days ago, I was running through the badges and this player impressed me most. It wasn't until I seen the attributes of this player and the lack of contact dunks and the horrible three point shot where I was like, yo, that was my favorite build last year. They ruined it. They have a whole litany of badges. The left side of the screen is a small forward version and the right side of the screen is a power forward version. Just look at it. Just look, not just a lot of gold, a lot of silver and a lot of bronze. And uh, I don't know if they counted it wrong here. Oh, yeah, they did count it correctly. It had 28 badges at Power Forward, ladies and gentlemen, 28 badges. So I went from so excited to create the build to there is no chance I'm creating this build. So this video, I'm trying to like put the builds that some people might create into the list. Obviously builds like playmaking rebounder make no sense. And making a 5-7 post defender probably doesn't make much sense neither. Those builds aren't making into this video. I'm talking about those specific builds that I think people are gonna create that when you really take a closer look at them, turn out to be pretty horrible. Okay, so this last one I know is obvious to a lot of people but some people still do it. If you're gonna put sharpshooter in your build, either be a pure sharpshooter or a secondary sharpshooter. Please, for the love of God, people, stop making primary sharpshooters and slasher secondaries or defender secondaries. Because sharpshooter is so wildly deficient in every single category, you putting slasher secondary is still gonna mean you're a below average slasher. You're not getting any contact dunks. You don't even have a good driving dunk. You're literally just taking away your sharpshooting attributes and badges from Hall of Fame for no reason. Because the sharpshooter is so limited in its scope, it's the one archetype where it makes zero sense to do something like this with. I mean, to each his own, you can do it if you want. Just know you won't have the best build on the court at any given time. Unless you're playing with like five, seven pure slashes. In which case, I'd probably still make an argument they're more exciting to watch. At the end of the day, you're gonna make whatever build you enjoy playing with. But there's gonna be dominant slasher builds, or sharpshooter builds, or playmaking builds, or glass cleaner builds, right? So you gotta do your job to find out which playstyle you enjoy, and then find an archetype that best represents that playstyle and dominate with it. That's about it for the video, ladies and gentlemen. In the chat, I want you guys to drop the worst build in the game. <sighs> and we'll get some conversation going. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next video. If you guys enjoyed, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, watch one of these two videos. I'm out. Peace.